Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Bruce Schwartz. Thanks so much for the support, for stopping by. What are we looking at? The surface of the moon. All the anomalies on the surface. Well, we're looking at the that line of light. This is Plato Crater. Comparing footage, of course, 2016 to 2018. Check it out, guys. On the left, look where the line of light is. And look what is exposed in plain view. High, towering objects. We're pointing to the same area right now on each of the respected footages. Look at the high elevations. See, with that line of light, it's showing us shadows that are obviously throwing the light through the, the structurings and the high towering objects. The light's making us see the truth, right? Look what we're looking at, just an amazing surface. So in this video, a lot of cool stuff we're gonna go look at Hey, for the longest time, I thought I was looking at a crater uh, with a tower on the side of it that was Archimedes. And after all, it was Copernicus. Imagine how different a crater looks like when that line of light is directly on it. Well, I'm going to show you guys Copernicus crater with that line of light directly, directly on it. And we're going to see all the anomalies that are around it pretty revealing a lot of amazing stuff that we don't see in footage when that line of light is not there no matter what the strength or intensity of the telescope eratosthenes crater copernicus crater a lot of color on the surface that i've always tried to capture and show people what looks like even signs of atmosphere on the surface uh, oscillation boy i tell you some of that oscillation is definitely not just earth disturbances i do believe I really do believe that some of the, the disturbances come from the atmosphere that could possibly over be over the moon itself. We all know there is an atmosphere. It's just higher than they said, like John Lear says. A towering object. Looks like it could be lying down, could be a tunnel entrance. Whatever it is, so long me it looks constructed. In the footage of 2016 in the top, I'm showing it because, of course, look where the line of light is on top there. It's right over the crater and look what it's revealing and look at the bottom with my 14 inch telescope okay we can't even see it <laughs> yes we're further out but it's a lot clearer and even if, when we get in we can't depict the difference in the height of that object because it's you know it has the same re reflectivity as the surface the structures have the same reflectivity and when you get to the line of light it's showing us details through the shadows on the surface revealing a lot of secrets on the moon's surface for the longest time, I thought this was Archimedes. Why? I have no idea. The line of light that you saw at the beginning that showed us this tower-like object or entrance or tunnel, whatever, this straight object, was because the line of light, that line of light and darkness, was directly just on the edge of Copernicus crater. So uh, I had presented this as Archimedes crater for whatever the reason. I was not used to seeing... Um, a crater so differently with the line of light. I didn't know at the beginning either that that line of light was showing us that much detail um, on the surface of the craters. And now here's the thing, Copernicus crater with this straight edge tunnel-like entrance at the back, north side. It has to be something constructed. If not, if it's natural, either way, it's pretty interesting. See, each crater has these darn features. There's something manipulated on each and every crater, and we're finding the, the proof um, over time, of course, and following that line of light, very important, following that line of light showing us detail around the structuring. The structures really are seen sometimes only when that line of light and darkness are there, showing us detail on the surface. It's really real. We're gonna go see, I'm gonna show you an example of uh, the first really confirmed city that I had ever found on the surface of the moon. That proof is going to stay in is why this channel's here that I'm going to keep um, showing whatever I can on the surface when I find something. You know, I'm not here to change anything. It's just free information and footage that I present to the world for free because I want everyone to see. I mean, this is not something that can be sold. This is amazing. See, the structures are right here in the center. Whatever construction this may be, it's it has the same reflectivity as the surface and unless these shadows are there it's just a white surface and you just really don't see the surface structures really keeping the main focus on copernicus for this video look at this line 
that even has massive objects holding this up over each area, high elevated area. This is leaving underneath Copernicus and it's going to what looks like a structured object or construction of some sort over to the right there on top. You see, these are all signs that the surface really could be um, visited or have been visited. And But you know, I'm seeing UFOs there now, so it must still be visited. I'm not ex throwing or forcing this onto anyone. It's sort of pretty obvious at this point with all the findings anyways. And these paths, they could be bridges, right? They could be electrical connections, who knows? Watch this, the green patch at the bottom of Copernicus Crater is fascinating me. It's a very uh, straight patch of greenery that veers off and looks like it has a wall alongside of it. We'll see it a bit closer right there. As blurry as it is, beautiful. <laughs> Some beautiful proof, you know. That surface does have a haze over it, guys. We're not going to magically cut through that veil. It's really there, and this is why we're having problems sometimes to get in. Look at the object going in the ground. Again, always under Copernicus Crater with that greenery around there. And it's the objects or and or cities, whatever that's on the surface. For us to see it, we really have to get in close. And when I say close, I don't mean close. I mean really have to get in close. And this is why when we do get in close, obviously we get a bubble sensation on the photos and things edges are more rounded etc it's they're a bit more blurry which is absolutely normal right because we're just trying to research that surface in every way that we can but you know these are good credible ways for us to see signs of some truth on the surface i mean and imagine you know um with under millions of dollars of funds doing this you know i got an amazing telescope thanks to the community here and we're finding some truth already we'll advance more and more as we uh progress right through the years but this equipment is expensive telescopes are really expensive you know and like you and like all the contributors here they're not rich that people that had hearts and wanted to give money for us to get that telescope and we did you know because we want to see some truth I'm holding my end. I promise to do this every day and wherever I can. I ain't gonna hide it. When I'm tired, I'll take a couple days off. Anyone can. I'm just having a lot of enjoyment being able to share what what's up there. And for me, this work is relaxing. It's it's keeping me focused on my beliefs actually and uh, what I really believe is out there. And you know, seeing more and more is not scaring me anymore. It's uh, really fascinating me. I think it's just absolutely incredible to get the chance to see what's up there. A little bit of some space news as I rarely get the chance to listen to the news, but especially what's going on with Elon Musk. Elon Musk, is he going private? Is he cutting away from the markets? You know, a lot revolves around what happens to the markets, right? A lot don't know this when it's all depending on what Elon Musk uh, does what he achieves etc in his efforts to get to space and with all these crazy awesome experiments that he that he's doing he wants to break away from that market and from the stress and the scrutiny of it all and to open privately and maybe even something about Saudi Arabia funding him for some certain um, efforts to go private so we'll be hearing more about that in the news in the coming days a lot of amazing support here guys thanks a lot i love you all for it thanks for the contributions and help and support in my goal my dream our goal and, and dream mike hoisington tony Baitasari, manel delay alan thomason robert eubanks cameron mclean recent donations from uh community members and friends thanks so much and again even more recent gerardo r carmona dles Thanks for the generous donation. Benoit Paquette, merci mon homme. C'est bien apprécié. Very, very appreciated all the support, you guys. Mark Bradley, thanks a lot, man, for the generous donations. Bro, for being a part of this community. And Patrick O'Donnell, welcome, man, to the community. Thanks so much for your generous support. Looking forward to talking to each and every one of you. You have a UFO video that you own the copyrights to? you want to have seen on this channel, please send it to Bruce Swartz, 75acommercial, gmail.com. Leave a short description and, of course, your name.